designing a trial of biomarkers in treatment selection. And we'll take questions for both presenters after Robert's finished. Thank you very much for asking me to come and speak here. And thank you for sticking uh, with a talk talking about radiotherapy and cystectomy in bladder cancer. Uh, so this is uh, just a, an idea to get some views on a possible future trial uh, looking at comparison of uh, the, the use of a biomarker in muscle invasive bladder cancer if one comes available. And the background to this is that, uh, as you're aware, that surgery is generally regarded as the best option for treatment of muscle invasive bladder cancer, but many of those of working in oncology think that radiotherapy and bladder preservation may be a substitute or, or an option for at least some patients with uh, uh, bl the, uh, bladder cancer. And this is particularly so as we're getting now better results with sensitized radiotherapy using either chemotherapy or uh, hypoxic sensitization. And uh, this has led to the concept, which is called quite popular in the oncology grounds, of the idea of doing selective bladder preservation. That is, let's try and preserve the bladder in patients where it's most likely to work. And in this sort of procedure, you have some form of selection criteria, a biomarker by other means, which when it's positive uh, for a good result, you go for conservative treatment with surgery reserved for salvage. And if it's negative, you select out those bad patients and who immediately go to cystectomy and therefore don't delay cystectomy treatment. The question is, what do we use to, use to select a patient? And this discussion came about when we became aware that there are some biological markers uh, which are coming available. We just heard about MR11, but there's uh, TIP60, which is also in this Danish study, and possibly AMP3, which has come from John Kelly's group. And there's also emerging data that Bladder, not all bladder cancers are the same, and there are subtypes of bladder cancer, some of which may do better with oncology treatment than others. So this led to the discussion as how, do we, how would we go about evaluating a biomarker in this setting? And in this, we have a problem. Uh, you're all familiar, or may, most of you are familiar with the SPARE trial, which we ran a few years ago, where we randomized patients between selective bladder preservation and cystectomy. And then we had an initial feasibility phase aiming to recruit 110 patients. Unfortunately, the trial failed to recruit and actually closed after three years recruitment with 45 patients recruited. So this leaves us a problem because actually this sort of direct randomization is unlikely to, to work again in the future. And this just highlights uh, actually what happened within the trial. And uh, in the screening logs we had, there was almost 750 patients screened most of those weren't eligible for a lot of different reasons. Uh, there was quite, you had to be suitable for both chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and surgery to be, to be eligible for the study. But there was almost 300 eligible patients, and half of those patients weren't approached about the trial in centres that were participating. And of those approached, two-thirds of them declined. That meant that we went from a potential group of 300 patients down to the 40, this stage 42 patients who were recruited. And we learned a number of valuable lessons. Um, there were probably fewer patients than we thought actually eligible for this sort of protocol. There was clearly very strong impact of physician, I mean by that doctor, preference. And even more important, there was very strong patient preference. Patients themselves found it very difficult to be randomized between two very different treatments. And uh, we also became aware that to be successful in this sort of study, we need to be excellent communicators and have brilliant information, patient information. So if we have a biomarker and we think it's a good idea, how, how are we going to evaluate it? A direct clone of the SPARE trial is unlikely to work. And what we need to do is have a trial which accepts the importance of both patient and physician autonomy in making that choice. So what we came up with was this idea that if we do go forward with a trial, that we would randomize the patient not to whether they get radiotherapy or cystectomy, but whether they make that decision with or without the market, the biomarker information. This is how it would look. You take your patient with a muscle invasive bladder cancer who's fit enough for either radiotherapy or surgery, and they'll be randomized. The control arm would be patient choice. 
Patients are counselled as you would do in your clinic on a day-to-day basis, and they make their own decisions regarding their care, whether that's for surgery or radiotherapy. And no doubt the balance of the numbers of patients going different directions will vary from centre to centre uh, based on the information and the expertise of the centres. The second arm, you would have what we call biomarker-optimised care. And in this, the biomarker would be assessed, and that information is used in the counselling process. So some patients would get... These are the options for treatment. Your markers suggest that you would do very well with radiotherapy or you wouldn't do very well with radiotherapy. You'd do very well with surgery or you wouldn't do well with surgery. And that information is used to counsel the patients. It's accepted within this sort of model that you can tell a patient, yes, you should have radiotherapy, but actually they say, no, I want surgery or vice versa. So this model uh, helps define a number of issues. It will first of all sort of tell us if we give patients information about both treatments, what do people decide? We'll be looking at whether this biomark information actually changes people's preferences. And we need to know how often would they accept such recommendation. If we have a biomarker and nobody listens to what the biomarker says, what's the point of having the biomarker? We're looking also then at actually the comparative outcomes are. What we'd expect is patients who accept a biomarker-optimised care would have better outcomes than those who don't. And the control arm, uh, can, which would, is, is not using the biomarker, can also be assessed as to what happens to patients with or without the positive biomarker to, to validate the initial data. So um, we would propose, if we went forward with this sort of model, that there'd be an initial feasibility phase. First of all, we need to know what proportion of patients would be eligible patients would agree to enter the study, what's the recruitment rate. And secondly, we need to know the proportion of patients in the biomarker optimist group who accept treatment recommended by the biomarker status. We think that if this tri- phase three trial was to be considered, we'd have to have about 60% of patients willing to accept the biomarker decision. And therefore, we'd probably need about 70-odd patients to see if we're getting that sort of level if we assume that the true rate, to exclude a level of of, of less less than 60%, if the true rate is around 80%. And then if that was successful, that would lead on then to a randomised phase 3 trial, looking at bladder cancer-specific survival. Um, We're looking at the hazard ratio, and if we look at that sort of hazard ratio based on the survival seen in radiotherapy studies, we'd need about 420 patients. That's quite a major hazard ratio, but similar to what was seen in the charity paper. So where are we with this concept? At the moment, it's not progressing very quickly because we need to wait on the uh, biomarker study results or an alternative biomarker. And actually going to the study does require a validated biomarker. We do need some further patient and public involvement feedback. And at the moment, the reason for talking you see here today is to try and to get some consensus whether this sort of study would be supported both in the surgical and the oncology community. It's been discussed um, at the NCRI Bladder Group, CTRAD, I should also say the uh, British Urooncology Group. We've also discussed it with the BAUS Executive, and today is your chance to have an input whether you think this sort of study would be worth pursuing in the future. Thank you very much. Um, I should say that we have got a number of people in the trial development group. We are wanting to beef up and strengthen the surgical aspects of the study. I should also add that this sort of study would act as a framework to address many of the questions that were raised earlier. For instance, one can collect in a prospective manner surgical outcomes from the surgical group, look at issues about lymph node status, lymph node dissection, the role of robotic cystectomy within the sort of framework. So this sort of study could act as a general framework for uh, improving and assessing oncology outcomes in this group of patients. So with your help, I hope we'll go from little seedling to a magnificent tree in the future. Thank you very much.